that is myeloblast in case of acute myeloid leukemia and it may involve different cell line in uh, myeloid series that give rise to different types of aml so uh, you may see involvement of monocytic series erythrocytic uh, series and even megakaryocytic series could be seen so uh, the classification is who classification that uh, entails the morphological classification and and the older one is fab classification which classifies aml into eight uh, subtypes that is from aml m0 to m7 now we uh, need to know a uh, certain uh, common aml amls of uh, fab type that is uh, commonly being asked you may be uh, given directly uh, the uh, nomenclature or you may be given just uh, this uh, number aml m3 might be given or a acute pro myelocytic leukemia might be given in the option so uh, you must be uh, aware of all these things and um, so coming to aml m0 it is minimally differentiated aml aml m1 with without maturation and aml m2 with maturation so here there is a di the differentiation of uh, uh, the blast into myeloid elements is progressive uh, and the most common of all acute myeloid leukemia that you need to remember is aml m2 that is often being asked and the translocation is very important that you need to always remember translocation 821 aml m3 is again a fairly common variant which is known as acute pro myelocytic leukemia and again the translocation is of utmost importance and often being asked that is translocation 1570 next it is acute myelomonocytic leukemia which is having inversion 16 as the genetic abnormality next comes acute monocytic leukemia and uh, next one is the acute erythro leukemia or aml m6 and another rarer variant that is aml m7 in which there is a megakaryocytic preponderance so let's study some of the important uh, ones out of these so coming to aml m3 so here uh, majority of the cells are pro myelocyte as the name depicts that is acute pro myelocytic leukemia the important thing that you need to remember is that here the pro myelocytes uh, the leukemic pro myelocytes they release lots of uh, thrombotic substance Uh, into the blood stream the granules have lots of uh, thrombotic substance and uh, the release of this thrombotic substance that induces dic so dic is very commonly uh, commonly associated with aml m3 and this is very commonly being asked aml m3 or acute pro myelocytic leukemia might be there in the option and you uh, get to see lots of pro myelocytes with all rods and cytoplasmic granules and patients are usually younger and uh, with the age group of 35 to 40 year aml m3 uh, acute pro myelocytic leukemia as we were discussing here you can see uh, the or rods the elongated rod like structures and uh, uh, the granules uh, are seen over here so multiple granules and the or rods of the myeloblast so here uh, the myeloblast often the morphology is being uh, given uh, in the vignettes so that is described as a large cell with round to slightly indented nuclei with multiple uh, nucleoli usually two to four nuclei may be present and if it is being mentioned as or rod straight away go for myeloblast so myeloblast could be seen in any kind of myeloid uh, leukemia that is acute myeloid leukemia or even can be seen in chronic myeloid leukemia so characteristic translocation is 1517 and 15 has pml uh, gene uh, receptor and 17 has rar alpha gene so 1517 uh, translocation uh, leads to abnormal uh, retinoic acid uh, functioning uh, so it uh, retinoic acid is normally important for the granulocyte maturation so this translocation leads to abnormal retinocytic uh, uh, functioning and that leads to disruption of this pathway so retinocyte induced growth is being disrupted and that leads to premature arrest of uh, cells so lots of uh, pro myelocytes blast and all these components are seen so the transformation beyond pro myelocyte is arrested so treatment with uh, all transretinoic acid can overcome this uh, maturation block 
and cause the neoplastic cells to mature. The maturation starts happening. Uh, so it may induce remissions, though it is not a complete curative uh, uh, treatment. And you, uh, the, the complete curative treatment lies in bone marrow transplantation only or stem cell transplantation. But still, it, uh, it brings uh, relief and uh, remission to the patient. Coming to the AML M4, which is, as the name implies, acute myelomonocytic leukemia. So it has component of both myeloblast and monoblast. So both myelocytes, myelocytic and monocytic elements are usually seen in equal proportion. Monoblast are negative for MPO and monoblast are usually positive for NSC or non-specific yeast trace uh, cytochemical stain. AML M5, uh, you need to uh, remember that uh, here you, the sole element that you will see is uh, monocytic element. Myelocytic elements will be very scanty, uh, very few in number. So monoblast and pro-monocytes will predominate. And uh, here you will see that uh, lots of monoblast will be there, which is uh, having positivity for non-specific uh, uh, yeast race. So monoblast will be mostly lacking and it, uh, monoblast will be mostly predominant and myeloblast will be lacking. So here the important thing that is often asked is the gum infiltration. So gum infiltration that leads to profuse gum bleeding is very commonly seen. So this blast or leukemic cells, monoblast usually infiltrate the gum that leads to profuse gum bleeding. So gum infiltration uh, and it can present as a tumor mass in the gum and the gum can start uh, bleeding profusely. So clinical features uh, of AML are uh, same as that of uh, all, all uh, general features of acute leukemia. And uh, the lab features include uh, anemia, thrombocytopenia, neutropenia. Peripheral blood uh, shows uh, presence of uh, blast. Again, here the different terminologies are being used. If, it, if the blast are uh, not seen, some cases may not show blast at all in the peripheral blood, we call it as a leukemic leukemia. If the blasts are less than 20% in uh, blood, but more than 20% in bone marrow, we call it as subleukemic leukemia. And if the blast, if both the uh, peripheral blood and the bone marrow shows blast more than 20%, we call it as leukemic leukemia. But to be called it as acute leukemia, you should have more than 20% of blast at least in bone marrow. So age group uh, is very important in uh, solving the questions of uh, acute uh, of all kinds of leukemia. So usually uh, the ALL is seen in zero to 14 years of age group and AML uh, 15 to 39 is the first peak that is the most common one. And 40 to 60 years, the second peak occurs in AML. And this can, ha this can happen uh, in association with uh, uh, various uh, MDS-like uh, features, uh, various uh, cytotoxic drug therapy, or some other features as well. So uh, bimodal peak uh, can occur 15 to 39 or 40 to 60, especially if it is around uh, between the age group of 50 to 60, you can you may expect a MDS-related uh, AML uh, transformation. MDS, which is nothing but a pre-leukemic condition. So here, MDS transforms into acute myeloid leukemia, in, and in that case, you may see 5Q7Q deletion as well. And CML is also common in 40 to 60 year. And if the question, uh, in, if in the question it is more than 60 year, it is most likely CLL, which commonly presents above 60 year of age group only. So AML, as we discussed, 15 to 39 age group uh, is the most common uh, age type. And Apart from that, uh, there is uh, the, the general features of uh, AML are uh, weakness, pallor, fatigue, infections causing fever due to neutropenia, easy bleeding and bruising are seen due to thrombocytopenia, bone pain can be inflicted due to infiltration of periosteum, and as we discussed, acute promyelocytic leukemia, AML M3 presents with DIC, AML M5 or acute monocytic leukemia presents with gum infiltration, gum bleeding. So if your question says gum infiltration, gum bleeding, then it is most likely an AML M5, go for it. AML M2 uh, is known for infiltrating various uh, soft tissue and internal organs also. And it is known as chloroma when it infiltrates multiple uh, 
uh, internal organs and uh, mucosal membrane skin because uh, here it uh, assumes a green hue and the greenish color is due to high level of myeloperoxidase in the immature leukemic cells so it is known as chloroma granulocytic sarcoma or even myeloid sarcoma so this is often being asked chloroma granulocytic sarcoma and this is commonly seen in aml m2 and here uh, you see the positive immunostains are seen used for uh, differentiating it from other uh, type of uh, uh, tumors that is uh, here you will see the myeloid marker cd1333 and even secret cd117 is positive so aml m2 is associated with chloroma that you need to remember m3 with uh, dic and m5 with gum infiltration these are the very important questions the very important uh, yields points based on which the questions can be asked now uh, pay attention to the special stains uh, these are often uh, being asked very useful in solving questions of uh, many of uh, your leukemia related questions mpo uh, it speaks for myeloblast sudan bla uh, black also can be positive in uh, my myeloblast and a pas stain is usually a uh, positive in lymphoblast usually a ring like positivity is conferred by a uh, lymphoblast NSC positivity is seen in monoblast is very characteristically seen in M5 and also in M4. TRAP or tartrate resistant acid phosphatase positivity is exhibited by hairy cells of hairy cell leukemia. And TDT positivity is uh, usually seen in immature type of uh, T and B lymphoblast. So uh, CD markers. So as you all know, CD is nothing but cluster of differentiation. they are uh, commonly used uh, to type various type of uh, leukemias lymphomas and to differentiate between them so pertaining to the acute leukemias let us discuss some important ones t cell markers cd3 cd4 cd5 cd8 b cell marker cd19 20 21 23 and cd10 is uh, also known as uh, kala antigen uh, which is commonly present in uh, all or it's called as common acute lymphoblastic leukemia antigen and the blast markers uh, that are usually present in the uh, the myeloid uh, cells the myeloid blast are usually positive for cd34 and uh, cd117 apart from that uh, myeloid cells also are positive for uh, myeloid elements immature myeloid elements are also present positive for cd13 and cd33 and monocytic markers monocytic cells like uh, pro monocyte uh, uh, monoblast monocytes they are usually positive for cd14 and cd64 erythroblasts are usually positive for, for glycophorin a and also sometimes cd71 is used megakaryoblast or aml m7 which is very rare and here cd41 and cd61 is positive in aml m7 or megakaryoblast so one important thing about uh, mega aml m7 sometimes it is being asked that aml m7 Uh, here, uh, because of uh, preponderance of megakaryoblast, which releases various growth factors, uh, fibrogenic growth factors like PDGF, so lots of bone marrow fibrosis is being seen. So bone marrow fibrosis is a very important feature of AML M7 that you need to remember. Sometimes it may be there in your vignettes. So uh, coming to the prognosis and treatment, difficult disease to treat as such. 60% achieve complete remission with uh, chemotherapy and uh, five year survival uh, disease free survival rate is 15 to 13% uh, only and uh, regarding prognosis 8 uh, 21 inversion 16 that is uh, aml m2 and uh, aml m4 they are having usually a better prognosis and age more than 60 uh, if it is associated and if it is secondary to mds if it is therapy related uh, uh, AML, then uh, you may have very poor prognosis, and the patient may have very poor prognosis. So, so in this secondary to MDS, the patient may have the cytogenetic abnormalities, that is, deletion 5q and 7q may be seen in the patient. And bone marrow transplantation is the curative ultimate uh, curative modality in all forms of AML. And AML M3 or acute pro-myelocytic leukemia, as we discussed, it is treated with. all trans retinoic acid which is able to confer a remission uh, a remission for uh, 
few years, but not completely curative. So AML M3 can be treated with ATRA or transretinoic acid. So whenever your question says regarding transretinoic acid, just assume that you are dealing with acute uh, myeloid leukemia M3 or AML acute uh, promyelocytic leukemia. So uh, that's all uh, for uh, this uh, presentation. Hope you learned uh, the high yield points and uh, uh, you learned various important concepts of acute myeloid leukemia, the important MCQ points that you grabbed. So uh, please watch this video in, uh, again and again to uh, retain more. And uh, please subscribe to the channel, comment on the video, and uh, uh, stay hooked to the channel for uh, much more videos. Uh, and uh, there will be a video on acute uh, lymphoblastic leukemia and other types of leukemias very soon to be released. So thank you all. See you all in the next video.